six months ago, I came on here and said, this year I am committed to a scrap-free 2023. It's been quite the journey. I've made lots of blankets and let go of a ton of my scraps. And now I'm down to this. I can't wait to share with you how I got to this place. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Before we get into the video, I just wanna share with you that there is a playlist link down below with the first four videos of this series. So you're gonna see one video from back in January where I'm getting all of my scraps organized. Then you're gonna see another one from sort of the end of January, beginning of February, where I'm making a plan. There is also a video all about different project ideas for scraps, I have a really big Ravelry um, project favorites folder that also has good ideas for advents. And then finally, I did a vlog on my granny square blanket and you'll find all of those linked down below. The next thing to talk about is, yes, I am sitting on a mattress on the floor. <laughs> when I'm filming this, we are getting ready to move to New York. We have about one week before we are moving. By the time you're watching this, we're already gonna be away from New York City, we're gonna be in Tennessee. But while I had all of my projects here, all my blankets here, all of my yarns here, I wanted to go and kind of sum up this process that has been going on for the last six months. So with that out of the way, let's head back in time to January of 2023. When I set this six month goal, I actually knew that we were gonna be leaving New York City. So instead of making my scrap free goal to eliminate all of my mini skeins and advents and scraps by the end of the year in December, I knew that June was going to make more sense for me because we were gonna be moving and I wanted to literally clear up space and clear out yarn and different projects. So in January is when I decided to make my mark and get started on this. And I pulled all of my different yarns out of their hiding places. I mean, there were some in closets, there was some in my yarn shelf, there was some in bags, and I just pulled everything out and I had my husband Kent's help and we got it all spread out on the bed just so we can see everything and get everything organized. From there, I made some decisions on the things that I definitely wanted to keep and make projects from, which were mostly the intact advent calendars that had been purchased in the last one to two years. And then I made a decision about which things I was ready to go ahead and let go of. And I bagged them up, I got them ready. I didn't get rid of anything right away. It took a little bit of time, um, but I did go ahead and make all of those decision decisions when I had everything out there all together. After I had about a week to kind of think on those things, mull things over again, I didn't get rid of anything right away. I was ready to make my project plans. So my initial plans were as follows. One, finish the granny stripe blanket that I'd already started. Two, make a knitted shawl with my Fangirl Fibers Disney Advent. Three, make a crochet blanket for toaster with my Pokemon Advent. Four, use my A Homespun House Advent, but I was undecided on a project for this one. And five, assemble the granny squares that I had been making over the last four years. Now that's not exactly what happened, but those first plans were a really good starting place for me. Then each month as I decided which project to work on next, I got to decide like, what do I wanna work on right now? What kind of pattern is sounding most exciting to me? And I'm happy to report as of the end of June, which is what we are in right now, I have used every single one of those advents. When I started on my Scrap Free 2023 journey, I didn't realize that it was gonna turn into an absolute love and obsession for making blankets. My first project that I planned was a blanket, so that wasn't a surprise at all, but I really couldn't have predicted how things turned out as evidenced by the stack behind me, but I just wanna go one at a time through the months and talk about the projects that I finished for Scrap Free 2023. So the first one is this one. It is the Scrappy Granny Stripe Blanket. It is absolutely huge. I could not <laughs> get it spread out here enough on camera to show you, but essentially it is the 
uh, Granny Stripes pattern by Lucy of Attic 24 that I adapted with the help of um, the yarn hoarder. She was the first one who I saw doing this many, many years ago. Uh, adapted it for fingering weight yarn. So I've got all the notes about how I adapted this pattern, exactly how big I made it, how many rows I did, how many stripes I did, all of that in the project page below. Now I started this project in January of 2018, which is long before I had this goal of the Scrap Free 2023. But I had been working on this in December of 2022 with an advent calendar. And I saw how much I enjoyed working on it daily. I had a goal of working through one stripe per day, which was two rows per day, probably about an hour to an hour and a half of my time. And so I thought, you know what, if I, actually I didn't think, I specifically planned. I realized how many more rows I needed to do to get the length of the blanket that I wanted to match the width that I already had and realized that if I worked on this blanket every day in January, that I could finish it by the end of the month. And that may have actually been the spark that started it all for me with getting rid of my scraps. So I used a specific set of scraps to finish out this blanket. I had done a swap in the Love and Stitches membership um, the year prior, and I still had all of those yarns. I think I had like 20 of them left to do, and I needed around 25 colors, so that was perfect. So I, I set out to use all of those yarns, and every single day I had either I like closed my eyes and pulled out of the bag a new color or I let Toaster pick a color or I let Kent pick a color. And it was just a really fun ritual and something that was just so enjoyable day in and day out. I worked through this thing and I ended up finishing it on January 29th, right before the end of the month. I do have to say that this blanket is something that I use all the time. It sits on the couch. I use it. Kent uses it. Toaster uses it sometimes and it just has really become a lovely piece for us. So I cherish this one so much and thanks for being the first blanket of the year. After I finished my Scrappy Granny Stripe blanket, my next task was to finish my Scrappy Granny Square blanket. And I set out to do this one in the month of February. So I wanted to begin it February 1st and end it by February 28th and just have it all packaged in a nice, neat little bow. We'll, we'll get back to that. So this project is also one that was already started and technically I wasn't using any scrap yarns when I was, like I wasn't working from any scrap yarns to put this blanket together. All the squares were already complete. So I started this project in April of 2018 making different granny squares. I used my own granny square pattern. It's a free pattern and I have a free tutorial for it as well. It's called Scrappy Granny by Nitty Natty and you can find it on Ravelry as a free download. So I made all of these granny squares mostly between 2018 and 2021. I guess entirely between 2018 and 2021. I used Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations advent calendars for each of those four years, and I made a square every single day of the advent month in December. So that left me with um, somewhere in the range of 96 squares. I actually had a few more because I used a few other yarns to put this blanket together. And then once I laid everything out and I think figured it out, I ended up with 96 squares, I think. All of that is in the details too. I then used a tutorial by Hooked by Robin to do my very first join as you go, which was such a good tutorial and such a great way to join all of these squares. I used a really lovely neutral yarn from Moon Glow. All those details are down in the project page. Um, but this was really, really fun. And this set into motion my first like Okay, let's think methodically about this. I actually got back into making project plans, you can see here for February, and my plan was to assemble five squares per day. So the squares were already done, again, they were already finished, but to actually join five per day. So that's when I started doing this kind of thing where I'm ticking off five squares, you know, the next five, the next five, the next five. And it didn't go perfectly. I don't think I finished this exactly in February, did I? Oh, I did actually. 
wow, that's pretty great. <laughs> I kind of forgot about that. Um, but I, you know, I didn't get five every day. Some days I had to kind of do some catch up and things, but overall it went really, really well. I then added the border to it. Um, if you do remember when I was working on this project, I put it in the washing machine and several of my squares actually came apart in the middle because I used a magic ring um, that was not a double magic ring. I also didn't weave my ends in very well. Uh, so I've learned a lot from this blanket <laughs> and I'm really appreciative of it. So this blanket is so lovely. It's not the biggest blanket, but that's all right. It, it has been laying on the chair in our bedroom. Um, we don't really use it that much. It's more of like a decoration, but mostly because I already have the bigger blanket to use. So this one turned out really, really lovely. Would I do something like this again? Maybe, possibly, but I'm really pleased with how it came out and I had so much fun learning a brand new technique in joining it together. With those first two blankets finished, I got to finally start a brand new project and actually dive into using some of the advents that I had. So the first advent that I wanted to use was my Fangirl Fibers Disney advent. I originally thought that I would make a shawl out of it when I planned back in January, but when I really thought about it, I just knew that I wasn't going to wear a shawl that had that many different kinds of colors. And so I started exploring the idea of making a, still making a shawl, but that was going to be more like a a schlanket, something that would be big enough to be a blanket that I could wrap up in that I would essentially use as a blanket. And at that time, I actually did know that we were thinking about moving into a van. And so I was thinking, oh, this will be my blanket that I'll have, um, you know, in the passion passenger seat with me that I will like wrap up in while we're driving. And I just thought, you know what, if I'm trying, I'm essentially trying to find a shawl because I thought I wanted to make a shawl that I will just use as a blanket. Why don't I just make a blanket instead? <laughs> that would make a lot more sense and I would get a lot more use out of it. And that's when I found the Quadrophenia blanket. So this is Quadrophenia by KF Jones. I've got it folded in half twice here. So this is only a quarter of it. It is a knitted blanket and therefore it did take me um, about two months to make. So March was really busy. We were traveling a lot. So I didn't get started on this one until uh, March 20th is when I got it cast on. And then I finished this one on May 17th. So almost exactly two months, but I really had a lot of fun with this one. And I love I just loved making it because it was really fun to open up the colors every day again. This is a really easy knit. It is the same couple of rows over and over again until you change the yarn. And the other cool thing about this is that it's designed for advent calendars and it's designed to use up as much yarn as possible because you would weigh your yarn and see how many rows you could get out of it. So essentially after I had done one section, I knew all the other sections would work the same. I did have a plan when I started this to kind of go three colors per week. Um, so that would be, let's see, there's 24 colors, three colors per week. That should be six weeks, right? No, wait, that's not right. That would be eight weeks. So I think actually then I decided to do four colors per week. Can't really remember. I was trying to interpret. <laughs> I was trying to interpret my plans. I didn't do many plans for March, but then for April, oh yeah, that's four colors per week. So I did about four colors per week. And then uh, going on into May here, let's see, where are my May plans? Some months are not the greatest with project planning. Some months I do a lot more um, understandable plans. Like I was trying to figure out what does this mean here? The week that I finished the blanket, 14, 14, 14. And then it says block sew border, which I did do, but I don't really know what that means. <laughs> so as I got towards the finishing, things did slow down a little bit. Um, I didn't wrap it up quite as fast as I thought I would, but that's okay because I really just enjoyed making this blanket and just the ritual of it and spending the time with it. So you make it in four kind of tri uh, triangles. So they're kind of like making a shawl like shape and it made it really portable and really great to bring around with me. Then you seam it together. And then I added myself a border, an I-cord border. You may recognize this yarn from the 
granny square blanket here and I put all the notes in my project page so if you want to make something similar you can definitely or do a similar border you can definitely do that um, I really like this blanket I would honestly make this one again maybe make it a little bit bigger at this point it's just big enough to fit over my feet and come right to like the crease of my hips if my legs are straight so I, I do think it's actually going to serve the purpose that I want it to which is to be a blanket that is small enough because it does fold up pretty small and it's nice and like lightweight but still has a has a weight to it if that makes sense but i think it's going to be the perfect passenger seat car blanket for me so this one is likely coming in the van to add a little bit of color and a little touch of home one more thing i wanted to add about this blanket i have leftovers from it very very small ones and a lot of you are going to be disappointed in me to know <laughs> that I still haven't done anything with them. They're still a mess. Whoops, hold on. They're still kind of a mess. And But the good thing is I have learned from this um, in future blankets. So instead of uh, keeping them tangled like this, I have managed them in future projects. But my plan is to attach them to this magic knot ball, which is where I put scraps once they have become too small to be other projects. So usually things that are less than two grams, maybe even less than that. And I tie them with a magic knot and then wrap it around here. And one day this will become something too. So by this point, I have started catching on to the fact that Toaster, our little dog here, really loves the handmade blankets that I'm making. In fact, anytime I would lay them out, um, whether they were complete or not, he would go lay on top of them. He would sometimes lay on top of the yard. He just really loved them. And I had already planned in the beginning of the year to make Toaster a blanket. And by May, it was finally time to do it. So my fourth blanket for the year is this one. This is the Crochet Advent Baby Blanket by Lucienne Crochet. I've got it folded in half here. It is the perfect size for a baby or for a pet. And honestly, it's a decent lap size blanket too. I made some modifications. Of course, they're in my project page. I've been taking such diligent notes for these just in case I want to remake them, like make another version in the future or whenever there are questions about them I can remember what the heck I did. So instead of using 24 colors and a main skein I used my 31 skein Fangirl Fibers Pokemon Advent Calendar. Each stripe used around 15 grams of the 20 gram mini except for the very first one the cast on used a little bit more I think I had four and a half grams left of that one. And I didn't do anything with the main color, so my blanket ended up being a little bit taller, I think, than the original blanket, a little more rectangular um, than the original blanket. I also changed my gauge to be slightly looser because at this point I made two crochet blankets and realized that I really, for me, like a D hook, which is uh, 3.25 millimeters. That's just what I like at my gauge. I think I'm a little bit of a looser crocheter, so do with that what you will. But I did a little bit of math and I realized that if I made the blanket narrower um, or cast on, chained fewer stitches at the beginning, I could get a similar size and have plenty of yarn. I kind of realized that I could have made the blanket a little wider, used up a little more of my yarn, but it really came out to be the perfect size and Toaster loves it and we love that he loves it. We, it has a ton of dog hair in it <laughs> and that's all right. I don't know, can you see that on here? There's a lot of it. <laughs> And that's okay. Um, but the great thing about wool is it doesn't hold on to smell quite as much as other things. So luckily I shouldn't have to wash this quite as often as some of his other blankets that we wash every single week. So this one will probably be coming with us on our travels too. I haven't quite decided yet, but I feel like Toaster deserves to have this blanket and then maybe the one he has. We all deserve two blankets, right? So I do want to talk about the leftovers for that one. I'm not going to talk about what I'm doing with them until the next segment here. Um, but I do have a lot of leftovers. Actually, I should have taken this out earlier. So I have five grams left of each color. And because that's a lot, uh, if it was maybe one to two grams, I would probably be adding it to my magic knot ball like I was with the quadrophenia or plan two at least. But with five grams, I thought, I could really make another project with this one. And this yarn being Pokemon yarn, 
my husband Ken is a huge fan and so I wanted to make something for him. So that's coming up in a second. But I just wanted to show, sorry, it's here at the way bottom of this plastic bag, that for each one of those colors, I had a ball of yarn this size left over. So everything right now is balled up. These are just the last six colors, I think. Everything else I have put into these little numbered bags that I got with a different advent calendar, just got that all organized. Because what I'm planning to do the next project is not gonna take five grams of yarn. I don't even know if it's gonna take one gram of each of those. So after I'm done with the secondary project, so this was the first, I'll do a secondary project. I'm going to be giving those yarns away. I've already had several people reach out to me that are Pokemon fans. So it's going to be one of those people. Um, so I feel really, really good about that. Uh, I don't think there's much more to say on this one. So let's get to the next blanket. This next project is the last and final blanket of Scrap Free 2023. It's also the final advent calendar that I originally had that I wanted to work through. So I'm really pleased to already be working on this blanket. But first, just a quick summary here. We have the January blanket, the February blanket, the March, April, a little bit of May blanket, and then this one I finished in May. So four blankets in the first five months of the year, and then I have started one final blanket. This blanket I am not gonna finish by the end of June. It's gonna be another two month blanket, a June, July one, but I am more than okay with that. I don't feel like just because I'm not gonna finish it in six months, it's a fail. Like if I didn't have the six month goal, I wouldn't have gotten nearly this far. So let's talk about the last one. So <laughs> here it is. I'm using my A Homespun House 2022 Advent, so just from December of last year, to make all these beautiful solid granny squares for the Battenberg blanket by Sandra Paul. It's a beautiful blanket with colorful squares and then uh, neutral colored squares in between. And I'd never done a solid granny square until I did this blanket before. So this was a fun new skill. I started this one on June 5th, so pretty close to the beginning of June, and I am on track to finish working through all 24 colors from the advent by the end of June. Technically, I think July 2nd. So, you know, the months are a little bit flexible. And then my plan in July is to work on the other set of squares. So you make half the blanket in the advent. Well, that's not true. It's not for advents. I'll get back to it. <laughs> and then, uh, so half the blanket is going to be in the advent for me. The other half is going to be in a solid color and then I'll need to add a border. And when you make the solid color squares, you also join the blanket as you go. So I'm excited to do that. Um, but for me, I, I feel very proud of this one because I feel like I have been honing these blanket skills to really be disciplined and really just disciplined in a way that's enjoyable. Here we go, got to my June project plans. So you can see the little technique that we developed here throughout the months of ticking things off. I am on track right now working through six colors per week to make all of my granny squares for the Battenberg blanket. And it's been super, super fun. I actually learned that I really like having something that I'm doing daily, but then there's a kind of like a buffer day. So if I can't quite get a, a square done or a set of squares done in one day, or I just want a day off or I finish early, which happened last week, that's really, really nice. So a daily routine, but only six days of the week. I don't know. I don't know what that's called, but it works really, really well. And I have this blanket currently ongoing. It is not done. Um, I'm in the middle of a week right now. So here are the grannies <laughs> that I finished this week. I just put them back into the label to keep them uh, easily to know the colors for assembly. And then I have these ones to go for the week. I'm in my third week of doing this. So all of these on the bottom are finished. And then these are my last six colors that I will do next week. I have, again, been learning <laughs> through this process. And this time, when I have leftover yarns, I am winding them into their own magic ball. So instead of bringing around this giant thing and attaching it to this, I have been, uh, I started with the first color and this is how 
big my Magic Knot ball is now after 15 colors. I have about 1.75 to 2 grams left per color after I make six squares out of it. So a 20 gram mini, I make six squares, and then I add the rest to this because it's not enough to do anything else with. Eventually I could tie this Magic Knot ball to this one, or I may just keep them separate because this one's getting pretty big. And one day, maybe I'll do a Magic Knot ball project. I don't know yet. Um, but this has been definitely the most organized project I've felt. And it's just, it's felt easy. It's like a no brainer. It's like, you know, you're going to get up every day and drink coffee. I know I'm going to get up every day and make as many squares as I can try to make my six squares. And if not, I finish it off the next day and start my next six squares. It's just like, it's a no brainer and it's feeling really, really good. So I'm so happy with this, uh, current blanket project that I'm working on. And if you want to continue to see the progress of it, just make sure you're following along in the podcast or with me on Instagram. As a reminder, all of these lovely projects have very detailed project pages and they will be linked down below so you can find both my project notes and the original pattern if that's something that you are seeking out. Now, blankets are not the only thing I did for Scrap Free 2023. Even though I wanted to work through Advent mainly, I also had a lot of other actual true leftovers and scraps. So I had made another project and then had yarn left over and then what the heck to do with it. <laughs> I did make a video all about different project ideas for your leftover yarns. And there's kind of two different approaches I feel like to scrappy projects. It's either a compilation of your scrappy yarns, multicolored, lots of different colors, all made for a larger project. And I know a lot of people don't love that look. I do really like it in blankets, but I don't really like it in garments. I have seen it done well though, so not saying that you can't do that. But for people who don't really like the scrappy look, the other option is to make a small project. And that's what I ended up doing. I have made essentially a ton of my own cozy patterns. These yarn cozies are absolutely amazing to use yourself, but they're also really fun to make as gifts, etc. So I've made a ton of them with just the scrappy yarns that I had. So the first thing I set out to do is kind of make a modification. This was in February of this year. I made a set of 50 gram mini yarn cozies. I needed to adjust the pattern because I had noticed my cozies were just not feeling quite tall enough after actually using them for uh, a few projects. And so I wanted to experiment with, you know, how many inches did I need to add? So I made this set of mini yarn cozies. Um, I don't have them out with me because they're actually packed away in a moving tub right now, <laughs> um, but they look like this and they were easy and fast and fun to make. I learned that I needed to add a half inch to make it better. And I've since updated the pattern on Ravelry. It's the mini yarn cozy pattern. And I also really like making one of the I-cord edges a different color. So if you have socks that you're knitting out of 250 gram balls, you can go, oh, this one with the purple is the first one. And this one that's a solid color is the second one or however you want to differentiate that. So whenever I needed to make a cozy, I can just go into my scrap drawer, pull things out and have something ready to go. Then in March, I was participating in Laura Nelkin's Knit for Food a thon where we raised money for four different organizations that um, supported people in food insecurity. Um, food, food security? It was a charity event. <laughs> and anyway, I was um, helping to collect donations through a page that I created and to reward people that had donated, I decided to give away two prizes. And the Knit for food was an, was an actual like knitting marathon. So all day, one Sunday, you were to be knitting and raising money. And so I decided to make a couple of cozies, which you can see here. These were 100 gram cozies, I believe. And again, I went to my scrap drawer, pulled out a couple of fun colors, and I knit up these cozies, not in one day. It took me a couple of days um, and ended up pulling from the people who had the donees and sending those off. So those I don't have anymore, but they went to um, a good home. Thank you for your generosity there. 
Then in April, I was developing my crochet mini yarn cozy pattern. And for that, I needed lots of scraps. I needed to work through things several times. So I had my scraps ready for me for that. You can see here that I used a bunch of different colors. Um, I kind of enjoy having a small collection of scrap yarns. Um, another thing that I learned through this process because I really thought I wanted to get rid of just absolutely everything. And then when I started a new project, I would use the leftovers all the way until the end, or if I knew I wasn't gonna use the leftovers, send them off to somebody else. Um, but through this, I realized that I do like having a handful of leftovers, but just not too many. And if I'm working with a color for some specific reason that I know I'm not gonna work with again, then I can let it go. Um, but I don't have to get rid of everything because it is nice to have a few scraps on hand. Plus having scrap yarns is great for uh, working in like toes and heels and cuffs of socks. You know, you just never know when you're gonna need a little something. So that was great for the mini crochet yarn cozy. And I made several cozies out of that as well and added to my collection and released that pattern. Then in May, we did an actual cozy along. So all of my yarn cozies, all of my can cozies and different things uh, were part of that make along. And I wanted to make myself another 50 gram sock set since the one that I made back in February, <laughs> I realized was really great and I only had one set that worked for me. So I went into my yarn collection and I pulled out two different yarns, this one, that's a lovely pink that I really, really like. The project page will be down below. And it has these little blips of neon that match this almost exactly. This is another yarn, another dyer. So I did that same thing again, where I did the 250 grams, where I made one of them slightly different. And then I made a 20 gram to go with it. So if I have a sock set that I split into 50 grams, 50 grams, and it has a mini, I am all set and ready to go. This little set is going with me and my bag that is going in the van. So I'm gonna stick that one back in there. Okay, that's it for the cozies, but I have one more scrappy project that I am working on and I just got started on it actually. So remember from the last blanket, the Pokemon blanket that I have lots of leftovers and I wanted to do something for my husband, Kent. So I decided it would be really fun to make him a Muscleboro hat. Muscleboro is a pattern by Isolde Teague. I have made six of these hats so far, and this will be my seventh one, and it will be different from any of the others, of course. So it's essentially going to be like this one, except instead of it being these colors, it's going to be black, solid black on one side, and then on the other side, which will be the inside, I'm going to stripe each of those super fun colors from this make along. So I've got them all organized here <laughs> and they're probably gonna be like two row stripes. They're not gonna be very long. They're not gonna use a lot of yarn, which is why I will then let go of that yarn finally. <laughs> I feel like two projects is enough. Like I got so much out of the yarn, it's time to let it go, go to somebody else and let them enjoy it. Um, but I will be making that for Kent and I just started on it. I'm starting with the solid black side, black Iron Man, you can't see anything, but I'm starting on the solid black side and I was able to get a black yarn from Emily of Fangirl Fibers, so same base. And once I get through half of it, I will then count all of the rows and then do some division. I have 31 colors, I have X number of rows. How many rows can I do out of each color to match the hat? And that is the plan for those scraps. Okay, that is all of the projects that I've worked on for Scrap Free 2023, but knitting and crocheting is not the only way that you can get rid of scraps. Donating yarn is a uh, maybe a little bit of a controversial topic. I know it can be really hard to let go of something that you've spent a lot of money on, but what I found over the past year, going through my stash, eliminating my stash, and now attempting to eliminate scraps, is that giving somebody something that you are no longer using is 
such a joyful thing because you now no longer have to look at it in your house and feel guilty every time you see it, but you also get to make somebody else happy. And so I've really enjoyed uh, using this to give away different things that I am no longer using or know that I'm no longer going to be using and allow other people to use those things. And so this came about in my Scrap Free 2023 as well. Let's take a look at a picture again of back in January when I had all my scraps and advent calendars laid out on the bed. So you now know that I have used three of those advent calendars plus some of the scraps for cozies and for my granny stripes blanket, the very first one that I showed. But what about all of those other scraps? Because now I am down to this. So how did we get here? Oh wait, and this, and the magic knot ball. So how did we get down to this stage? That was through donation. So after I made all of my decisions, organizing everything and going, I'm definitely gonna use these. I didn't get rid of everything else at once. It was a gradual process. Um, I went back and looked through the camera roll on my phone to kind of jog my memory and figure out where everything went. And I can tell you exactly how this happened. So at the end of January, once I kind of had a better sense, actually after I finished that first blanket, because I wanted to make sure I had scraps for that blanket, because it's a truly scrappy blanket from actual leftovers, not an advent. So after I finished that, I was ready to let some things go. The first thing that I gave away was a really cute 12 skein advent calendar from Mandy's Makings. Um, it was just something that I knew with all the other things that I had going on, I probably wasn't going to get to this year. Plus I felt like the colors weren't as me as some of the other things I had and I knew somebody that wanted it. So it just worked out perfectly that it would go to that person instead. So I sent that to uh, one of the Love and Stitches members in my membership and mailed that off to them and now they get to enjoy it and I don't have to feel the guilt of going oh do I need to work with that like how does that work into my other things the other things that I also let go at the end of January were all of my small scraps so I had sorted all of my scraps by weight I knew that some of them were 5 to 10 grams some of them were less than 15 and some were more than 15 or more than 20 all of those that were more than 20 I hung on to, I put in a, uh, a basket in my closet or like a, a drawer, <laughs> a drawer in my closet. And then the rest I had bagged up. And I had shared on the podcast that I was ready to let those go because I didn't have any current projects where I was going to be working on scraps that small. Oh, that reminds me that I also went ahead and let go of my mitered square blanket at that point too, because those were the scraps I needed for that. So I was like, I'm not doing this mitered square blanket. I'm not gonna need these scraps. And uh, somebody reached out via email. Um, actually, I think they had reached out in December. So I already knew I was gonna be giving those away once I knew I didn't need them anymore. So I gave those away to a viewer and shipped those off and they really enjoyed them, which again, makes me super, super happy. And then the last bit is all of the yarns from uh, this this blanket. <laughs> like, which, which one again? So the Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations uh, colors and yarns, they had a really specific feel, very soft, and they were all about the same size. So as I was sorting through all my other scraps, I knew exactly which yarns were coming from this blanket and which were leftovers from it. So I put all those together in their own bag and then again found somebody else that was interested in them. Those scraps were about 13 to 14 grams and so I shipped those off to them. They got to enjoy them and I didn't feel like I needed to work through all of that yarn. So a big chunk went away in January. Then from February to April, pretty much nothing really changed. I wasn't really letting go of anything. I was still working on my advents, working on my blankets. But in April, I decided to finally go through my large scrap drawer. So this was the drawer that I had originally, I had sorted out anything larger than 20 grams, I had put into this drawer and I had been pulling from it, you know, for my different yarn cozies. But there was a lot of yarns in there that I realized that I was skipping over because I just didn't care for the colors. Um, of course, I had worked with those yarns before, but now I like, 
I know where I'm at right now and I am, I'm a pink and a purple and a blue and a gray, you know, kind of girl. And that's just who I am right now. And that's okay. And I had a friend um, that I uh, regularly see at one of our knitting groups here in New York that was saying, Hey, like I've been looking for scraps. And so I was like, I got you. I'm going to hook you up. <laughs> I got plenty of scraps for you. So I put together two gallon size bags for my friend in the knit group and brought them to her at our next knit group. And she was super excited about them and still sends me pictures uh, when she was working those into the blanket that she's working on, which is not necessary at all, but really nice to see. And then this is what my drawer looked like after that. I didn't have too much left. You can totally see a color theme going on here of the bright, beautiful colors that I decided to keep. Not saying the other colors were not beautiful, just What's beautiful in my mind, in my eyes, is pink, basically. So when I look at that drawer, it felt very much me, and that was really, really nice. Now in May was the last bit of things that I needed to give away. I'd kind of forgotten about this one, but over the years I had been, like even, I think it's been probably two or three years that I've been collecting. No, more than that, because I started doing this back in Texas and we've been in New York for two years, so it's been a few years. Uh, but what I started doing is whenever I would finish, usually a pair of socks, something in fingering weight, and I had a ton of yarn left over, let's say I had 40 to 50 grams left, I would take that and I would split it, I would wind off 20 grams and put it in this advent calendar that I was creating. And then I would use the rest maybe in my scrappy granny stripe blanket or something else or just throw it in that large scraps drawer. So I had been collecting and labeling and putting into these little craft paper bags. It would say, it's this yarn and this color and I use it for this project and there's 20 grams in here for years. I almost gave it away last year. We did an advent swap in our Love and Stitches membership. And I don't remember what happened somehow we had like an uneven number and we needed somebody to like drop out. And I was like, it's cool. Like I am not trying to gain more yarn anyway. I really just wanted to gift my yarn. I don't want anything in return. So let me drop out. So I didn't end up using that advent. And so I had been holding on to it thinking, you know, there might be a point in the future where I'm going to swap again. I should hang on to these scraps. And with the move coming up and everything and thinking about where I'm going to be in December and November and not really in a place where I can get to that and swap with somebody and still just not wanting to actually swap. I just want to give it away. I don't want anything in return. Uh, somebody came into my inbox um, that was, they just like casually mentioned that they needed scraps for a project and we had been corresponding via email they're super super nice they're a reviewer and we had chatted many times and i was like you know what i got you <laughs> i have some scraps that i have just been waiting for the right time and place in person um to give these away and i would love to give them to you so again another big bag shipped off and out of here and off where it can be in a place where it's actually getting used, which is the best part of all. So that's how we are now down to this. And no, we are not scrap free, but we are really, really close. So let's wrap up what we got going on here. In summary, I have completed four blankets this year with a fifth on the way all from scrappy projects. I've also completed four other scrappy projects, all cozies, and I have a hat going at the moment. I have given away about seven gallon size bags of scraps and a 12 day advent. And guess what? I've learned absolutely nothing and I've already ordered four advents for next year. Okay, that's kind of a joke. It's it's not a joke that I actually have ordered four advent calendars for December of 2023. That is the truth, but I have learned a lot in this process. I actually wrote some things down because I, I just kind of wanted to share like, you know, what has, what is the purpose of having a goal and what do you learn from it when you are constantly running after something? So my goal was scrap free in 2023. I don't know if I really said this out loud in the YouTube channel, but my 
thought behind that was that I would have no scraps at all. I would have nothing. I would have all the Advents finished and I would have no balls of yarn and my only scraps would be the, you know, project that I just finished and then I would work, I would make a cozy or I would make something with it or I would start a brand new, actually this is really what I was thinking. I would start a brand new scrappy blanket project and so anytime I finished a pair of socks, anytime I finished a shawl, anytime I finished whatever, I would take the leftovers and knit or crochet it into that blanket and then start the next project. That's, that's really what I thought. And I don't even know if I was defining that clearly enough for myself, but as the months went on, I started to realize that's the way that I was thinking and kind of adapt and adjust that. Now, the way I feel about my scrap free 2023 is that I've done exactly what I wanted to accomplish. I used a ton of scraps. I gave away a ton of scraps. I made four amazing blankets. I learned a lot. I learned that I really love blankets and that I super enjoy having a daily goal and kind of a daily repetitive task. I don't know how far this is going to carry me. I do think that once I finish my Battenberg blanket, hopefully by the end of July, that I'm probably going to need a blanket hiatus. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I'm going to see what is going to work best for me. But it feels really good to have cleaned the slate. And now when I go into Advent making this year, even though I'm going to have a ton of Advents, I feel that I'm going to think about them differently. I'm going to enjoy them for what they are. I'm going to enjoy opening them, opening them but I don't feel like I'm going to have the pressure to have to make them during December, which I did feel in the past. Like I felt like if I didn't make those advents, use them up during December, that I had failed in some way. Um, and I don't really know why that is the case. I can use them any time of the year, or you know what? I cannot use them and I can enjoy opening them and I can give them away. I know that's kind of a crazy way to think about something that you spend so much money on, but the truth is, is that the advent is yours. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with it. You can do whatever you want with your scraps and it's it's your journey. It's, you're the boss of your knitting. You can do whatever you want. Um, I've also learned that I really love managing my yarn when I have less yarn. I actually have taken more time to think uh, more deeply about what I want to do. Uh, I would say for sure, like for a fact in the past, after I made this Pokemon blanket that I would have just put the scraps away into a dark place in my closet and not thought about them again for a very long time. And instead I was thinking throughout the project, wow, I have so much leftover yarn. What do I want to do? Oh, I'd love to make a hat. Great. Then with the leftovers, I'll give them to somebody. Boom, boom, boom. It was so much easier to do when I didn't have all the other scraps and projects kind of cluttering my mind. Scraps haven't been the only thing that I have been working on during these last six months. I've also been working really hard on my needles and tools and also letting go of lots of finished objects. So Scrap Free 2023 kind of continues as I keep working on these blankets, these hats, these cozies. You can always follow along through the podcast, which I will update you every single week on Thursdays. And then of course you can find me on Instagram as at Nitty Natty, where I am getting much better about sharing my projects and putting them into Instagram highlights too. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look back on this journey with me. I know that I have everything, all the videos from prior to this are linked down below. All the projects are linked down below. Everything you need is right down there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.